I felt like recording something today. I, I was thinking about trying to do something on the whole coronavirus um, issue, which is obviously quite current. Yes, there's a lot of disinformation. Yes, there's a lot of fear about what's going on. And we can use this fear as an opportunity and as a way to, to come into our experience by, instead of at this moment in time, trying to turn away from the unpleasantness and turn away from, um, you know, the, the fear that this is, this is instilling in people, but to actually intelligently go into this fear to examine why we are feeling this particular way. Um, what we may find is then that um, it will offer us an opportunity um, to see whether these fears are real, to really examine these ideas. Um, there's a lot of knee-jerk reactions going on at the moment with people stockpiling food, other people going without, um, no clear direction from governments, um, and, and genuine, generally in the space of a day, this, the information flow has become so fast we can hear one thing only to hear it contradicted 10 minutes later with something else added on there. And I think this is where being centered and being where we truly are um, is so important. And what I mean by that is not engaging in, in, in some sort of fake practice of sitting there and meditating and trying to go with mantras, but really being honest with ourselves. I believe these things help, but I feel this is a time where if we can sit with the real uncomfortable feelings that we feel like, you know, earlier on today I was, you know, going for a walk and also this helicopter where, you know, flew over above. It's obviously a military helicopter now. There could have been a million thoughts in my head about, oh my God, you know, what's happening? Is the army coming in? Is it going to go into lockdown or, or what? And I heard a comment earlier on today about how this all feels like a film and it's going to be like The Walking Dead. And we can get caught up in all of these things um, and freak out a bit and go, God, what's going on? But we can then use those freak outs or those that confusion or that fear to really look at ourselves. And to give you a real life example of that, yesterday morning I, I got up about 5 a.m. and I have no idea why I was up so early. And I just felt this immense fear. Now, the conditioned response is we run away from that fear. We just, you know, like we do anything but to get rid of that. You know, we, we do some breathing exercises or we meditate or we listen to some sort of self-help CD. But instead, what I decided to do was just literally just lie there. And over the next three, four hours, everything was coming up in terms of like bodily sensations, feeling a real fear about things. And I couldn't understand why it was happening, but just decided to sit with it. But sit with it to the point where I wasn't witnessing it. There was just this fear. And gradually and slowly but surely, the fear started to dissipate. And there was this increase in energy. And also I found myself, you know, writing. I found myself, you know, I've recorded some videos for a new book that, you know, it's just going to be released. And this is something I've been procrastinating on for absolutely forever. And all of a sudden it's just like, oh, it's, it's, it's all coming out. And I think... The important thing that it's taught me is that we have to trust our experience when it comes to these situations. We're conditioned to trust anything but ourselves. So at this moment in time, you know, I, I, I know the country's going into lockdown and there's this whole thing about, you know, people are being told to stay in. And yet my own feeling and my own thoughts on it is that I, I just want to get out there and, and, and talk to people. And yet, simultaneously, it's, it's being interspersed with long periods of rest as well. And I, I feel that if we lived more naturally, whereby when we wanted to go for a walk, we went for a walk, or when we wanted to do something, we, we did it without wondering what people would think or going with the condition responses, we might find that we can see this situation from a place of wisdom. And as such, what we can do is that this wisdom that's innate in all of us can be used to resolve this situation because at this moment in time there are so many conflicting reports about everything that's going on and i don't want this to turn into a coronavirus video um but the thing is it's bringing up a very powerful emotion and that emotion is fear and fear is one of those emotions that once it's there it's very hard to shift it you know we it's one of those emotions we run from you know, we would rather have the blissful moments. We would rather have joy, 
um, gratitude. We'd, we'd rather have those lovely emotions than the fear one, because fear is really this horrible thing. And a lot of people, are, we, you know, we've all been conditioned, and I've done videos about this before. We've all been conditioned to run from fear, and yet sometimes we find that fear is so overwhelming that we can't run from it. And I think in those moments, it's best to, in a sense, instead of trying to fight it or witness it, just surrender to it, to the point where there is really only fear, and that fear is is us. And to fully feel it to the point where th there is really no other. As I said, you know, I'm lying there in bed and I'm just feeling this immense amount of fear. And I had a friend of mine who once said, you know, sometimes you just kind of say, bring it on, because what you'll find is, you know, the Sufi said this too shall pass, and I've said this in previous videos as well. And it's kind of interesting, because uh, as I've said that, I'm thinking you're reiterating a lot of what you said in previous videos. But you'll find that, fear has, has shelf life just like every other emotion there is no emotion that's lasted forever and we should take comfort in the fact that whatever's going on at this moment time as horrible as it feels and and as scary as it may be and as much as it's bringing up a lot of fear it will pass and it can pass sooner if we're patient and it can pass sooner if we're authentic with our our our, our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions, because it would be very easy now to get caught up in the bandwagon. You know, I've seen several teachers come out with the whole idea of self-isolation and or social isolation or whatever the buzzword is for it now. And I myself must confess, I seem to be going in an opposite direction, um, whereby to me, I, I, I feel that I would like to talk more. Um, there are dates in my calendar which are still open um, because I found that there's a group of people around me who are seeing the situation a bit differently and in that situation the authentic reaction within myself and it you know I, I could be seen as being foolhardy for this or you know a bit silly for adopting this position is to actually just get out there and let's see what the situation really is is it as bad as we think it is but for that, we have to meet those emotions. We have to meet those thoughts authentically, openly, and truly. Um, which is hard sometimes to try and do when you know, our conditioned response of fight or flight is being kicked in at every single instant by social media telling us that this is going to happen or that's going to happen or government policies are changing. Um, you know, I've, I've read both sides of the argument you know, from the conspiracy theorists to medical evidence. And I'm finding that each of us has this innate wisdom to make up our mind as to what's actually, you know, going on. Um, like I said, I've, you know, I've heard it's a hoax to, you know, this is quite possibly the worst pandemic that we're ever going to we're, you know, we're ever going to experience. I've heard that it could be over in weeks, it could be over in years, and rather than try and form a judgment, I'm finding that by being open uh, and by really feeling and by, by really trusting that the an authentic response for, for myself personally is, is coming out. And I think this is that time, and I've been talking a lot about this in my talks, um, and in videos, this is that time that the most important person that we can trust in this situation or when we're feeling immense fear or panic or confusion is ourselves, which is hard because we've been conditioned to look for the answer outside ourselves, to look outside ourselves for a solution because we have been told that we don't know or that we're not good enough. And I think with this whole idea of social isolation and self-isolation, then maybe we can use this as an opportunity to actually look at ourselves and to actually learn to trust ourselves that we are all one consciousness, we are all one human family and we are all connected and we are all part of this one intelligence. And yes, the story has been to look for the solution outside ourselves and to look to others but maybe we could use this situation to maybe look at those conditioned ways of thinking and those conditioned ways of reacting and see whether we can actually really turn inwards. Um, 
in an authentic, vulnerable and, 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 and open way. And to realize that the innate wisdom and the, and the answers and the, the place, the, the destination is, is ourselves. And that if we trust ourselves, that even in this most turbulent of times, we will find that we have the answers that we're looking for.